when you decode the neural activity, you could just print that as words on the screen, but you guys went a step further. Yeah, so everything before, even though it could be said out loud, ultimately the information's in the form of text. And I think we can all appreciate that a lot gets lost just through texts. It's less expressive, right? There's a lot of rich nuance that we all convey in our voice. And the other problem is the latency or the immediacy. So if I was talking to you and I could only write, it would be very easy for you to accidentally interrupt me because by the time I've finished a sentence and selected a button to speak it out loud, maybe you've already moved on to the next topic, right? So for all of these reasons, we really wanted to do not what we call brain to text, but what we call brain to voice. And that means go immediately from neural activity to sound. This is a hard problem for a lot of reasons, one of which is it has to be done super fast. So you want sound to happen within about 30 milliseconds. That's kind of matching the natural latency of brain to moving the muscles to vibrating air that someone can hear. Because of that, we had to decode these neural signals very quickly. Uh, it limits the kind of algorithms we can use. We have less data to work with, right? You can't look into the future. There's no autocorrect. You can't look at the entire sentence to figure out based on context, like, oh, I reached down to pet the cot. No, he, he probably meant cat. You can't do that if you're doing brain to voice. But we were able to, through a bunch of complicated engineering work, get really far in there.